The facts are our antibiotics that we have are now becoming useless in treating infectious diseases. Pneumonia, skin diseases, upper respiratory diseases, lung infection. If we don't do something, by 2025, more people will die from infectious diseases than from cancer. And so we realized that the ocean is a massive biomedical resource, a new source for drugs. So what's happening out there? People go to the hospital to have their appendix taken out and they end up with a MRSA infection. It's over 90% resistant to antibiotics. We're going to get an epidemic of infectious diseases in the next five years. This is a serious problem that we are not properly addressing in the United States. In 1973, I came down to Scripps Oceanography and I knocked on the door and I said, I want to develop chemical studies of life in the sea. I want to do some things that people have not done. In the beginning, we were just exploring. Belize, Central America, Palau in the Indo-Pacific, Guam. I do have stories about being on board ships when we were serious danger. From hurricanes, serious weather conditions, we've also been attacked by pirates, in which the captain had to actually fire a weapon at them. What we've tried to do is explore, because we didn't know where the most exciting microorganisms were found in the ocean. We looked at seawater, we then went to the bottom sediments, and we began to understand what's there. But then we realized that bacteria were inside different plants and animals. We needed to develop sampling strategies to collect samples beginning at 1,000 meters, 3,000 feet. So we've developed simple tools like this device, which I would call a snapper. We'll drop this from a boat. When you hit the bottom, the jaws close. Bring it up to the surface, and you've got a nice sample of material to work with. We have about 18,000 strains of bacteria that we've isolated over the past 15 years. We put them into cryopreservation. In each box are small tubes, one strain of bacteria. We can then remove and begin to unravel the complexity of what's in that particular compound. Good morning. A little nauseated? OK. So we have a plan for your antibiotics, the one for the more serious infection, the staph infection. You'll get that for six more weeks, at least get it down. And then once we get that infection down, then you can go in and have your surgery. These are environmental substances. They've been around for millennia. In the last uh, 90 years, we've harnessed them and administered them in large scale to patients. We're just unmasking them slowly and slowly. And the more antibiotics we use, you're then allowing the environment for these antibiotic resistance, the bacteria, to become more and more prevalent. Then it starts off like this vicious cycle, a longer hospital stays and higher medical costs. The only way you can stay ahead of this constant evolution is by developing more drugs. Patients get side effects to antibiotics all the time. And if a patient gets a life-threatening adverse reaction to your one antibiotic left, then you're back to no antibiotics and the consequences of obviously increasing risk of dying uh, from getting these things. I was born in a time when antibiotics actually worked. And that was, you know, this really brief window of time from around the 1940s until around the 1980s. It really seemed like medicine had conquered infectious disease. I mean, it was Sir Alexander Fleming who said this when he got the Nobel Prize, you know. He said that if we use these antibiotics in ways that are not medically necessary, 
we will provoke the emergence of these drug-resistant strains of bacteria and other pathogens. We already are starting to run out of drugs that are strong enough, and we now have 23,000 Americans dying of drug-resistant bacterial infections every year. Penicillin, actinomycin, streptomycin, all of these drugs that we have today came from scientists studying soil. But that resource, after so many years of intense study, just began to diminish. And so we realized that the same microorganisms that were in the soil that generated the antibiotics are out there, but they're different. One of my workers was moving up and down the coast, and I said, why don't you stop and just take some beach sand? We discovered the bacterium that makes anthracomycin. We discovered that it was very active against MRSA. And so we began to study this microbe and finally pulled a compound from the complex mixture. This is one liter of seawater with nutrients that we know are useful in growing bacteria. We discovered chemically a brand new kind of structure, not related to any other kinds of antibiotics ever discovered and very potent. We called it anthracomycin. We did the experiment, a model where you inject rats with MRSA, methicillin-resistant staph. They're only going to live for five or six days. And then you have a treatment group treated with anthracomycin in a way that is similar or identical to how you would treat a human. And then we watched. 85% of the animals survived. They didn't show any evidence of toxicity, a critical piece of information that allows you to convince people that this could, in effect, be a drug. And so the question then became, how can we develop it? Very few drug companies want to create antibiotics. It's a lot of money to do the R&D. What do you get out of that? You get a drug that's used for maybe a week at most, and which, even though it saves lives, um, people don't want to pay more than 100 bucks or so. You know, we'll pay tens of thousands of dollars for a cancer treatment that might not even extend life at all. Now, what that means is if that kind of infection is out in the environment, is really an end to medicine as we know it. Drug-resistant bacteria are one of the most uh, serious public health issues that we face today. Despite President Obama declaring an initiative to begin to work on this horrible problem, Congress has not allocated funds to do so. As of today, there is no national focus on the development of new antibiotics. When you're looking at such a massive resource out here, you have to remember that finding just those perfect discoveries that are gonna cure infectious disease takes time, takes investment, and there's risk. You know, a typical drug for cancer in a pharmaceutical industry would require the involvement of over 200 people, 300, 500 million, a billion dollars. The kinds of grant money that I can get are $100,000 per year. We found six or seven good quality antibiotics in the last six to eight years. Five cancer drugs, two of which are currently in clinical trials in humans. The major pharmaceutical industry quit isolating new antibiotic compounds. They quit working with microorganisms. What an error in judgment in my mind not to think about 75, 80% of the surface of the Earth. What's the alternative? Don't develop anything, don't discover anything new, not consider infectious diseases, the massive epidemic that it is going to be, 70, 80, 90,000 people dying in the US per year. Our antibiotics that we have are now becoming useless in treating infectious diseases. But should I quit? Should I not keep trying to do so? I don't think so. <laughs>